Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. This is a virus named Tom from Misfits Attic. This game is currently available to pre-order for just $5. That's a 50% savings on the eventual release price of 10. And if you pre-order, you will get access to the beta. And that's exactly what we're looking at here today, the latest beta release of a virus named Tom. This is an absolutely charming puzzle game with a personality all its own, and nothing sums that up better than the introduction cutscene. So let's go ahead and take a look at that cutscene, and after that, I'll take you on a guided tour of a few of the levels from the first two areas in this fantastic game. You have to understand, everything was wonderful. I was creating the future. Metal dogs that didn't poop. I even cured walking. Then I invented Globotron, which would destroy anyone found walking. And that's when it happened. Megatech. Crazy, they said. How is that even profitable, they said. And that's when they fired me. Me, Dr. X. Me, the inventor of their precious city. Their precious city. Well, I have one last invention for them. Oh, I know they'll love him. I call him Tom. So there you have it. You are the invention of the dastardly and demented Dr. X. He is attempting to get revenge on the company which he believes unjustly fired him after he invented all of the convenience items of tomorrow. So he's going to deploy you, a virus named Tom, to break these devices down and shake the very foundations of civilization. And we're going to start out with the pet of tomorrow, the quote, dog that doesn't poop, according to the intro cinematic. So here we go. I'm going to take a look at some of the simple intro levels so you can get an idea of the concepts of this game. And at its very core, this game is about making circuits. Every piece of circuitry on this grid must be infected by your virus, your green, humming, buzzing virus. How do we do that? Well, we do that by flipping the circuits in order to complete the circuit. And I wish there was another word for circuit besides circuit, because I'm probably going to end up saying circuit a lot. Wonderful. The faster you do it, the higher your score. You can see my score ticking down by the second here. And I'm also losing energy. Of course, I'm a little nanobot, so I need energy to live. So in addition to running out of precious score, you can also run out of precious energy. And you can find yourself losing the level in that way. So here we go. Let's flip some circuits and let's complete a circuit. If you're keeping a count on the amount of times I said circuit, please post that in the comments below. And it might win you a prize. So here we go, we're gonna flip that one, which will complete most of the circuit, but we still have a little bit more to go. So let's go ahead and flip this one. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Simple, right? Yeah. As you might imagine, they are gonna introduce a few things that are gonna make that a lot more complicated. The first thing you're gonna be introduced to is this, the antivirus drone. So these drones are gonna roam around the map and they are gonna to attempt to make your life a living hell. So again, we're doing the same exact thing. We're completing circuits, nothing more. But while we're doing that, we're now having to avoid the ever-present pres threat of the antivirus. Now this little section in particular, this little section at the end, is a good chance to practice your turning. So one thing that you'll need to remember when you're turning pieces is, if you go clockwise around the circle, around the square, excuse me, that's not a circle, then the piece will turn clockwise. If you go counterclockwise, the piece will turn counterclockwise. As you can see here, I'm going clockwise. The piece is turning clockwise. Tick, tick, tock, tock. Right, so if we go counterclockwise, the piece turns counterclockwise. Very nice, simple, wonderful. That is, a, that is a system that you need to ingrain in your head. You really need to learn that. It needs to be second nature because later on, you're going to need to do these turns in just a split second at times. Well, let's go ahead and complete this level and move on to more challenging things. 
Now the scoring system, as you can see here, are the high scores. These are not active scoreboards. They only show the baked in high scores from the developers and then your score. There should be online leaderboards uh, with the launch of the game. And those of us who play in the beta and get high scores will be given the opportunity to be these initial high scores that people try to beat. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you can get some scores, you can submit your scores to the developers through a, uh, through a menu item on the front page. So mm -hmm, scores. We love scores because scores give you the opportunity to try to track your progress. Do you get better? Can you get better? For instance, uh, what you'll see here in the very first level is I have second place, 891 to Tim's 892. Tim is Tim Keenan, the uh, lead, uh, lead man at uh, Misfits Attic, and uh, he's driving me crazy with his 892 because I cannot figure out any way humanly, physically possible to get an 892. 891 is just the highest I can get. And that's a cool sort of thing, you know, that high score factor, when you, especially when you get really good at the levels and you're looking at that brass ring that's up there, in this case a gold ring because it's a gold medal, and you're just coming back time and time again. You're not doing it because you have to, you're doing it because you want to. And I think that's a brilliant thing in game design when you can create a game which compels you to come back and try for those high scores because you want them, not because you have to get them through some archaic system that's included in the game to unlock things or whatever. Here, you wanna beat the high score because you wanna be number one. You wanna see how did someone do this? You know, for instance here, I'm 18 points off the lead. How did someone do that better? You know, how can you do that more quickly, more efficiently? It's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I love games that have that aspect in there. And A Virus Named Tom is definitely a game that has that in there. So we're going to move on to the teleport level. Now, what I will tell you about this game is that I've only spent about an hour and a half, two hours with it. I'm really going to leave it up to you to decide whether you want to make this game part of your collection or not based on my simple first impression, but I haven't gone through it in a review style to try to get to the end and really do a lot within the game. So we're going to take a look at the teleport level and we're going to show you some of the more difficult concepts that come as you play further and further into the game. So here we go, the teleporter level. And hey, how did I get, huh, just seeing this little bit over here to the side that I didn't actually do. That's weird. Okay, well, we're going to go into the teleporter here and you're going to be introduced to yet another of the mechanics that attempt to complicate things for you in the form of encryption. And you're going to be told about that by a message that's sent to the virus, you, Tom, from Megatech. And I think that's a really cool little thing that they do where the corporation is actually talking to you directly and saying, hey, you know, you think you're so great. Yeah, you know, good job on that whole corrupting the pet of the future thing. And now we're really screwed. You're costing us money. But uh, we're going to best you because now we've got encryption. So suck on that. And I love that they actually send these messages to the virus. It's like they're emailing Tom and taunting him, sort of. And I think that's really, really cool. So here you're gonna see encryption. Oh my God, it's a bunch of question marks. Yeah, that was kind of my initial reaction. Now, the one nice thing on this level, at least, is there ain't a bunch of antiviruses skating around, but oh, there will be, there will be later, trust me. So you do get a very brief look at the grid before the encryption takes over. So you could attempt to memorize that, but most of the time you're gonna find yourself simply going for creative guessing like so okay that seems to work and now we're gonna try to connect oh there we go okay so we got one side done that's not too bad at all now to this side and this mechanic really makes things interesting really really it's sort of a memory game in a way but it's also just uh, sort of a hunt and pecker did I just say hunt and pecker oh my lord I did I think I did Hunt and Pecker. Oh, God. <sighs> Moving on. So this is a good example of the misdirection that they're going to use. Now, clearly, it seems as if this is my, my way to go, but not going to work. So that means that, that I'm missing something. There's got to be some other way that you actually complete this circuit. So uh, let's try something else. Like this, for instance. Oh, that seems to work. Hmm. All right. Maybe like that. Oh, yeah, that seems to work. But uh, what about this guy here? But there's no method for me to connect this guy, so I gotta do something. Uh, let's try this. Okay, so now I've got that, but I'm cut off here. So we can use this guy and this guy. 
there we go. Nice and easy, right? Yeah, right. That mechanic is going to come to annoy you, um, but not in a bad way, you know, in that sort of annoying way that difficult games annoy you at times. And uh, you're really gonna you're really gonna like the encryption stuff, especially when you have like six antivirus going really fast on a small grid, and you're trying to guess which way to turn a block. So I actually haven't played this level, so I'm gonna play it now for you live. So uh, first time I'm experiencing this particular level. Oh my god, a bunch of encryption. Oh no, and I didn't even pay any attention whatsoever. Okay, so this is gonna be my first thing I'm gonna try is just. Completing the circuit simply. That didn't work. Okay. And you don't have to actually make a complete circuit. When you have multiple power nodes like this, you can just simply connect those individual nodes for power, uh, for, for virus uh, spread, virus spredulation. <laughs> you can spread the virus in individual segments of the circuit without having one total complete circuit on the whole grid. So the important thing is to infect the grid. The important thing is not, uh, not actually to make the uh, make the circuit complete in terms of end to end. Wow, this is a, I really ballsed up this right here, just off the bat. Okay, there we go, there we go. Mm, let's try that, what that. Okay, well that's something. But how about this? Oh, let's see, maybe we can turn that. Yeesh. Mmm, this is not so easy. Look at these pieces over here. Wow. Wowza. Okay. Turn that. Turn that. Turn that, and turn that. Awesome. It was almost like I did that on purpose, almost. That was really just me feeling around in the dark and accidentally groping a boob. Awesome. So here we go, guys. Let's take a look at one more level, then we're gonna call it quits. This is a virus named Tom. I mean, it gets more difficult, it gets more complex, the puzzles get more challenging. And that's pretty much what there is to this game. Now, the one thing I regret having not been able to do for you yet because I haven't found anybody else who has the game is try, uh, not anybody else who has the game, sorry. I haven't been able to find anybody else who can play it with me. It's local co-op. I haven't been able to find anybody else to play the local co-op with me, but I've heard that the local co-op and local versus modes are amazing. I'm trying to convince my wife to try it with me, but uh, she's skeptical if this is really the sort of thing for her. So uh, I am trying to get somebody. I, I do have one or two friends IRL so maybe I can get someone over here to actually take a look at this with me so I have no idea what any of these are I'm looking for one that I did reasonably well on there we go so yeah I've heard that the co-op is an absolute hoot and I've, I regret not being able to bring that to you guys oh it's another message from our friends at Megatech hello again so we see you're figuring out the encryption very clever for a virus with an unclever name well, our scientists have come up with something even more clever. I put even in there. That was just naturally to add that word. It was just natural to me. <laughs> they found a way to absorb the infection. Have fun spreading a bunch of nothing. Nice. So, gasp. Now you see we have nothing here. There's no power source. So we can make a complete circuit all day long and it don't matter because we don't have any source from which to spread the virus. And this is one of the cool things that I like that this developer does here, Misfits Attic. They don't tell you how to overcome this, but natural human observation should tell you what? One of these guys is green. That's the first time that you've seen a green antiviral agent. So that probably means something, don't you think? Now in one of the levels we skipped over, they introduced a mechanic called something. I forget what it's called, but anyway, it's the ability to do that. To leave behind a little, uh, a little thing, a little piece of static that will slow down the antivirus. And I'll demonstrate that for you over here with this guy. There you go. So it slows them down and 
they eventually snap out of it, but it gives you the ability to sort of change their pattern if you need to, and uh, to, to allow you a little time to breathe. So since you have that tool that's been introduced to you, and you have a green, a strangely green antivirus here, the human brain works in such a way that you will put two and two together, and I love that. I love it when a developer allows you to solve a problem on your own and doesn't just handhold you through it. So what does that mean? That means that we're going to drop our little static bug right there, and we're going to wait for the inevitable collision. And when it happens, we win. Wonderful. So a big thumbs up to Misfits Attic for doing that. That is to say, not handholding me through and saying, Mega Man, Mega Man, you need to do right. You know, no, just saying, hey, look at this. It's green. Doesn't that seem odd? And you don't have a power source. Figure it out. Brilliant, simple design that allows you to actually be a gamer and make decisions like an adult person. Wonderful. I love it. So let's go ahead and take a look at one last level as I sum up my thoughts on a virus named Tom. All right, that would probably be embarrassing considering how far behind I am off the, off the number one score. Uh, that looks a little better. Yeah, let's go with that one. That one might be less embarrassing. We'll see. <laughs> so, oh no. Picked the wrong level. Great. <laughs> well, regardless of how much I'm gonna embarrass myself right here, let's talk about a virus named Tom. Myself a little something here. Okay, there we go. Do that maybe. Eesh, okay. So this game has a wonderfully developed art style. It has a great sense of humor. It has a great team behind it. A couple of the guys actually come from DreamWorks Animation Studios, so that's really really cool. And you can tell by the care and the uh, the technique that's used in this game that these guys are for real. I mean, this isn't just some guy with a tablet making pixel art and throwing it together in Game Maker. This is a team that is really dedicated and devoted to this game. And on their website, they say you know they want to make uh, what was the line? Big small games. You know they want to do large uh, games that feel large whether they are or not and this game definitely hits that note and I really really like it as I said it is available for pre-order right now oh aces just like that man oh pulled that one right out of my behind good lord so a virus named tom is available for pre-orders 50 percent off while it's in pre-order if you order it on their website that will entitle you entitle you to a steam copy upon release and if you get it on desura it is available on desura as well you will get the copy on desura so hit the alpha funding section of desura if you are a fan of that digital distribution platform otherwise you can buy it directly off a virus named Tom.com and get the Steam copy once it is released. This is a beta prototype, so if you saw anything that didn't seem quite right, it's probably due to the fact that it's beta. One thing I will point out and hope that is fixed is there are no uh, actual resolution options. The game is playing in 720. Uh, don't really have a major problem with it doing that. I just don't like the fact that there are no options to tweak that. I would really, really like it if there were. So. All in all, high marks for a virus named Tom. A really enjoyable game, fantastic art style, great sense of humor, wonderful team behind this. I see big things coming from Misfits Attic in the future. And a virus named, named Tom is a big thing. So I really think you should put this game on your radar if it's not already there. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. And until next time, take it easy.